Okay, welcome to our first installment on our NMR series. Today we'll be discussing Zeeman splitting. This is a core principle upon which all the other principles of NMR will ultimately rely. Now, Zeeman splitting uh, arises from the fact that spin one half nuclei have what we call a magnetic dipole. Now, I'll let you worry a little bit later about exactly what makes something spin one half, but what you need to realize now is that these spin one half nuclei have essentially a compass needle. Uh, inside of them that can either align itself with or against a magnetic field. Certain nuclei which have this property are protons, carbon-13, fluorine-19, and phosphorus-31, uh, all of which are very relevant to organic chemistry. So if we were to place an assembly of any of these particular nuclei, let's say protons to keep things as simple as possible, in space where there is no magnetic field. We expect these dipoles, represented here by the black arrows, to be oriented randomly. However, if we place a magnetic field in this area of space, these dipoles will align themselves with that field, leading to two potential orientations. The parallel orientation, known as the alpha spin state, and the anti-parallel orientation, known as the beta spin state. And it is the difference in energies between these two spin states that is the Zeeman splitting. So let's take a look at how we can treat Zeeman splitting mathematically. The Zeeman splitting is the difference in energy between the alpha and beta spin states. And we can calculate this difference in energy as a function of several things. First is the gyromagnetic ratio which is a property that is the same for all of a particular type of nuclei. So all protons will have the same gyromagnetic ratio. Next is Planck's constant, which, as the name implies, is also constant. The applied field strength also makes an appearance in this equation. And sometimes we throw in a 2 pi to help convert radians and degrees. Now, if you study this equation for a few moments, what you'll notice is that on the right-hand side, there are three constants and one variable. So if we combine these constants together for a certain uh, particular type of nucleus, let's say protons again, we can reach a point where we have this proportionality, where the Zeeman splitting, delta E, is proportional to the applied field, B0. Now, let's take a look at this graphically, how this affects the behavior of these spin one-half nuclei. Shown in this slide is the equation that we discussed previously, calculating Zeeman splitting as a function of field strength. So now I'm going to create a plot using these two terms. So let's set our proportionality, and then place our delta E and B0 on the axes of our plot. If I begin with an assembly of protons, which are in a region of space with no applied field, they will be aligned randomly. So this corresponds to the position on our plot where we have zero for our x-axis. However, as we begin to apply a field, what we notice is that the difference in energy grows proportionally with that applied field strength. And this results in the alignment of our nuclei either parallel or anti-parallel to the applied field. As I continue to increase the field strength, I continue to increase the difference in energy between the two states, encouraging more and more of my nuclei to assume the alpha spin state. Now this particular demonstration is a gross exaggeration of the populations, just to get the point across. In truth, we can calculate what these populations should be using something called the Boltzmann equation. And when you apply the Boltzmann equation to situations where we're using a typical NMR spectrometer, you'll discover that these population differences are very, very small. We're dealing with population differences of less than 1%. Nonetheless, we have to have that population difference, we have to have that energy difference, or Zeeman splitting, otherwise we couldn't do NMR. So next time we'll take a look at how Zeeman splitting allows us to conduct continuous wave NMR. And we'll also take a look at how Zeeman splitting factors in to the more modern pulsed NMR experiments. I'll see you then.